Okay, let's see what we got here. Classified Arms Reloaded. New fast travel system in Call of Duty Warzone? Sphere map in Call of Duty Vanguard. Wait, is this like the subway system that they introduced? You guys remember that? Back in Verdance, they introduced the subway system that allowed for fast travel. That thing was, at first, a cool concept, but then when I saw how it was actually implemented, was so hard to kind of figure out. Like, there was times when I would take the subway thinking I was saving myself, and it took me right into the gas and got me killed. The big saving grace for that was when they had the Easter egg under dam for Specialist and Juggernaut. That was great. I know a lot of people hated it. I love that, man. This Warzone update, 9 a.m. in two days on the 25th on Wednesday. So, okay, there you go. That's going to be coming out. Uh, remember, this is only a small sampling of key changes coming to both games. Season 3 Reloaded will feature numerous quality of life updates including a new squad heads-up display for Warzone that are set to be highlighted in patch notes coming out alongside this update. Squad heads-up display. Is this something that's going to be alerts for teammates rather than, like, the pinging system or maybe supplementary to the pinging system, could it be? Let's see. Navigate Caldera's new minecart underground transit system. So it does seem like it's going to be similar to what they added to... Uh, uh, Verdansk's train. If this is an underground minecart, that's it. They had an underground subway system on Verdansk. Uh, remember that rumbling and creaking beneath Caldera's surface before Season 3's launch? Those were the rickety minecarts being rediscovered by uh, intrepid explorers who were busy opening a new way to get around the island. Keen surveyors of Caldera during Season 2 already know where several of these access points are, and there are the hidden Nebula 5 bunkers, the door to the minecart hub room can be found right after dropping into each bunker. So, okay, this is, this is nice. They're repurposing these underground bunkers. We've been, I've seen these, and I, I've talked about this as like, these are just not worth going to right now. It typically, assuming that they're reusing the same exact bunkers, because this actually looks a little bit different here. But these bunkers haven't really been worth going to in general, in my opinion, for a lot of these. And actually, they've kind of been good mid-game come-ups as a reset because a lot of people don't even go to them off the rip of the game anymore. They weren't like the bunkers from Verdansk with the red key cards and some of the loot that you could get in those, I guess. Although I didn't get super big into those as well by the end of it. They kind of fade off some of the uh, cool factor, I guess. The other seven access points are small hatches into the minecart hub area. Here you can find a new map of systems. Each hub location corresponds to a letter of number your TAC map. Lower numbers indicate areas to the north. For example, the hub near Arsenal is B1, uh, while higher numbers, B14, are hubs near the southern point towards resort. So may uh, maybe it's just this is additional new points because they did add more points. And to this, like, this is a lot. Right, we know this mines one right here uh, very well. This is an underground bunker up at the top here. We know the one down over by resort here is a good underground. But for example, this capital one, I'm not familiar with this underground bunker. I know this underground bunker at, uh, at Lagoon. I don't know the one at Ruins. So maybe it's just they opened up new hatches there and this is what some of them are going to look like. To travel the mine carts. And now I wonder if it's going to be a teleportation system though. To travel via mine carts to another hub, simply interact with the circular hatch and walk towards the cart. When doing so, the destination name will appear on the screen, and you can also check the map to see how it interacts. After a few seconds of travel time, you'll instantly appear at your destination. Okay, so it is going to be a straight teleportation. I don't actually mind this, but the hard thing in that I'm hoping that this is clear. You can check the map and stuff. This needs to be pretty damn clear because this was one of the problems with Verdansk's underground railroad system or subway system was that you didn't really know where it was going to take you. I guess it did, it did kind of tell you it said next stop is this station, but a lot of times you didn't actually know where that station was uh, without figuring out and like looking at a map and everything. Probably the closed hatches. You're probably right. Yeah, there's been closed hatches around the map, so those are, those are going to be opening up. I don't remember those exact locations of where... They were when I was looking at it before, though. Um, and, like, the hidden hatches, I guess, that I've seen across the map. I haven't paid enough attention to it. 
So if it's clear enough, great. If it helps you rotate, even better, especially if it's something that you don't have to wait for. It seems like you just go down and you push a button and it lets you activate. So that actually would be, I think, a better transit system than an actual subway system where you had to wait for the train to come, wait for the doors to close. It did add to some suspense of like, oh, am I going to be able to make the push to get out of the gas to, or play the gas? Sometimes people would even take munitions boxes. They would take the train into the gas, use munition boxes and st stems to stay alive outside of the zone. I mean, we've seen a whole bunch of hijinks over the years off of this as well. Those... uh in the know, like you, after reading this section, can use light and audio clues to figure out if an enemy is on the other side. Oh, big intel here. Or if the circle collapse will soon engulf the destination. This is also good. Okay, this is good. This is good. If they have this on it, that's gonna that's gonna neg negate a lot of the problems. That like, if you're in a panic situation, you just want to know the answer to. This will help. That run snaps. Um. Before going up, throw one. Yeah, that's you're talking about leaving a bunker. But what I'm talking about is going from one bunker to another when you're just doing a blind teleport across the map. If you're doing a blind teleport from fields over to sub pen, then a, the scan is not going to work, right? It's the same thing in Verdansk when you're going across. You couldn't just pre-scan snapshot nade it. But this is important to note. You can use light and audio clues to figure out if an enemy is in the destination on the other side of where you are going. That is a big brain that... They're saying only after reading this. So that we're in the know now, guys. Now we know. This is the benefit of reading all this information sometimes. The hard thing is you got to pull apart all the stuff that they put filler and just all this other uh, flavor text in for, which you don't always need the flavor. You just want to know the facts a lot of times. At least that's what I want to know. As with most situations, when there is a green light, it means it's safe. Anything else can be meant to be potential danger. So that's going to be the key. Green light, okay. Everything else, there's going to be danger. And if the indicator is off... With gas going through the vents, then it means you cannot travel to that destination. It's probably you're already in the zone then, I guess. Mastering the system may be the key to the new meta after this update. Meta? New meta, dude? Oh, man, that's a buzzword right there. We got it. Uh, learn it so not so secret indicators well. Serpentine, the Vanguard perk arrives to Warzone. Wait, what? Scenario, you are in dead sprint across the map when suddenly a sniper from 300 meters out. That's me. That's me. I'm the sniper out there. I'm about to headshot your sorry ass. Starts taking pot shots? Oh, okay. I, I, I thought maybe he was taking, uh, I didn't, maybe there's different types of pots there and shots. I don't know. Somehow, one connects to your head. Yep, that's how my sniper shots go. And you're out of the game. Serpentine, the new perk arrived in the Vanguard, hopes to remedy this without completely leaving Marksman's out to, out to dry. Available in the perk one slot for all players after the update, Serpentine description is as follows. Sprinting reduces incoming damage from bullets, explosives, and fire by 20%. Are you me, dude? What the hell is this? So you're telling me you could put a perk on it while you're sprinting, you take 20% less damage, which would theoretically negate the one-shot potential a sniper has? What is this? Uh, will it be an auto-pick? Not necessarily, considering some of the other options in the blue perk one slot currently double time, which boosts tactical sprint, and cold-blooded, which directly counters combat scout, are two extremely popular choices in the new in the current meta. Yeah, everybody who uses these two perks are act are their bots though. These guys is like that's like saying you know remember the chart that we were looking at from J God. These are all the like this is a lot of people right here right. This is a lot of people playing the game over here. A lot more than the people up here. All of these bots down here are the ones who are using double time and cold blood. <laughs> All right, look, everybody, don't get super pissed at me. I'm, I'm, uh, okay, I know this is, this, I'm gonna get a lot of hate. Okay, I, but look, the, the best perk, quick fix, man. Quick fix is where it's at. This is where all the, this is where all the cracked ass players are up here. <laughs> this is where all the cracked people are. It's quick fix, man. All right, all the other bots that, like, this is, and even that, none of these are gonna be, a, I feel like this is gonna be super compelling. What? I don't know. This might be an auto pick. 
I, and here's the thing. I'm biased, guys. I'm going to be honest. I'm biased, all right? Everybody's salty. Look, I'm a little biased because I snipe. So if they're nerfing snipers again by giving people the ability to get take 20% less damage when I headshot their ass, when I'm already using a worse sniper than I was last season because of the other nerf they did, yeah, I'm going to be pissed, man. All right? I'm going to be pissed. I think, oh, come on, man. It's already hard enough to hit a headshot on a moving target. Like, what is more rewarding in the game than hitting an insane 300-plus meter headshot on somebody who's, like, ducking and dodging and sliding, and you hit the headshot? Like, is that not in insanely satisfying? Am I crazy? Now you're taking that satisfaction away? To be fair, though, to be fair... If they're calling everybody a bot, which I'll go ahead and hearsay and, and call it like I see it, then maybe those guys are just going to keep running all these other uh, these perks. All right, let's see what the data actually comes up with. They're Call of Duty saying it's not necessarily picked. The current meta, they're saying the current meta is double time and cold blooded for all of the all of the bots. All right, we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Then there is Quick Fix, which... Oh, here we go. Then they talk about Quick Fix here. Okay, I was getting ahead of myself. There's Quick Fix, which shaves seconds off health regen, which the most elite players tend to grab. Yes, it's right there, dude. It's right there. They said it. Yeah, objection, speculation. They said it. They said it, actually. Oh, there you go. Oh, I didn't even... See, guys? Look at this. I, didn't, I just needed to read one more sentence. There it is. All of the elite players, all of the people up here, all of the people up here are using the good perks. All of these people using the meta. Look, that's not the meta. All right. The meta is the best way to play. Man, you know, maybe it's meta for the bots down here. Okay. Oh, they even say it, man. They even said it. Wow. I didn't think they'd go that far. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Okay. There you go. We didn't even talk about EOD. Yeah, EOD is pretty good, actually. Uh, great pick for those who despise dry, dying to explosives. Yeah, that people who like to camp will, will use EOD. And I use EOD a lot, actually, too, uh, because I like to camp sometimes as well. But then you can't get died to as a Semtex, or you're trying to... Even if not, I guess if you're pushing aggressively, it saves you can get him from a, cl from a Claymore. So that might actually be good. The problem is that Quick Fix is going to give you more value in majority of situations, and it's more versatile than EOD. A lot of these, you got to think of what is the, what's going to help you in the majority of situations. That's how a lot of the other players play. Wow, okay, that's fun. That's actually pretty fun. Okay, we didn't even talk about, okay, as for the shooter, a snake indicator will pop up after hitting somebody with a serpentine. I like this. I actually really like this because if you hit somebody and they don't knock, you're, you're not sure is it because I hit them upper torso and I need to put more drop on the gun and aim higher, but if it at least tells you and you don't get the knock. I guess it doesn't perfectly specify because you could think that you hit a headshot because it's going to decrease the damage by 20% anyways. It's not only for headshots. It's for bullets, explosives. Ah, man, this is going to be really... I th How is this not going to be an instant pick? Because let's... Well, I guess quick fix might still be better. But let's say you're pushing into a building. You, a theory, you're theoretically getting EOD here as well, but only if you're sprinting. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I, that is interesting. That is interesting. This clear feedback... All, uh, uh, allows you to send quick follow-up shot, potentially with a sniper support weapon if they're close enough and gives you enough information to start the engagement with a still massive advantage. Very true. And this is actually this is actually very true to their to their credit here. This is great. This is a really good point. Because this is how I often even treat sniping. Even if I don't get that initial headshot for a knockout and an instant kill, I'm still treating it as an opener. So I'll open with the snipe and then immediately swap over to my secondary and try and finish off the target. Even if I, whether I hit, miss, crack, whatever, I'm using it as an opener in order, and, and this still gives you a massive advantage in your opener. Granted, it's 20% less, but it's only if they're sprinting. So this might actually be more balanced than I'm giving it credit for, but uh, that is fun. That is very fun. Okay. New item in Warzone, Gulag Entry. Wait, what? Redeploy Extraction and more. In addition to the new perk satchels, with, uh, which will now appear on Rebirth Island along with Caldera, Warzone will add three new items to the loot pool in battle in the loot pool, it mentions here specifically. Gulag Entry Token, Redeploy Extraction Token, 
and speed boost. What? Gulag entry token. The whole the holds owner. Let's see, they add all this fluff here. What are they actually saying? Developed by Raven. Okay, this token brandishes the infamous post death symbol and binds to your operator on pickup. Only one can be carried at a time, and if one is picked up or kept after the gulag is closed, you'll receive cash compensation for holding one. That's awesome. If you perish while holding a gulag entry token, you will be sent back to the gulag rather than needing to be bought back or eliminated uh, or to be eliminated from the game. Then it's like your first death all over again. Fight in a 1v1 duel to survive. This is super cool. We've been talking about this forever. This is a super cool idea. Even we've had the idea of what if you could even spend some money on this? Because a lot of times, especially early on, you skip the, the last sentence. Radar jammer. There's also a new field upgrade. Radar jammer. Oh, okay. We'll get to that as well. But ra a lot of times you would get so much cash at the early game. And even throughout the game, you might get so much cash from snowballing bounties and stuff, but you got nothing else to really spend it on. So ultimately, you would just uh, buy more UAVs, try and call advanced UAVs, which they've now made so expensive that it's like, do you really want to do that? Now you just kind of save cash. I've ended a lot of games, especially in the new mode. We've got like 20, 30K cash sometimes, and it's just like, eh, what are you going to do? But if you could buy a Gulag entry token, th th this is kind of the idea of even having the ability to buy specialists, which I think is a cool thing to add to the game for a temporary period of time. And it was like 80K or something ridiculous to buy it for, uh, which I never even bought it. But like that, I like having these higher tier things and other things you can buy from the store is my overall point. This is a really cool way to do it. Being able to buy yourself some more reses, I'm down with that. The other token, although I should say this is only found on map, it does say uh, you'll receive capture. This token, infamous, binds on operator on pickup. So I'm assuming this is going to be dropped off map, but we'll see. The other token, also developed by Raven, is something that Warzone veterans may be familiar with. A token that grants an automatic redeploy without any need to visit the Gulag or be bought back at the buy station. This is like the, the rebirth version, right? Where, for example, in Solo Rebirth, if you've got the redeploy, then if you die, you immediately come back. I actually like this one even better, but in the sake of, uh, you know, having at least be a little bit more competitive, the Gulag is probably better for it to actually have. Okay, just like the Gulag entry token, this also deactivates once the hold shuts down late in the match. That's perfect. They should not be allowing for respawn after that outside of jailbreak, in my opinion. I actually like that. And players who hold on to it that have... Uh, that long receive a cash prize as compensation. Love this as well. It gives you a little bit more bonus for it. Its usefulness is obvious, but its presence is rare. Do not expect to find these tokens often as Gulag entry tokens, which will already uh, be legendary rarity. So this will be like super legendary. That's fine as well. I kind of, I, I think it's cool. This buff often found in, uh, in, in particular, I think they should, I would rather see something like this rather than a self res. In in uh, in solos in particular, because it's really hard to come back when you're respawning. But if you can get a self res, it gives you a lot of viability. And I, I I'm not a big fan of self reses in general. Anyways, that's a different topic we can get into. Speed boost. This buff often found in Warzone's clash mode. This is like the overcharge. If you guys have been playing the new uh, Monarch Operation Monarch with Godzilla and everything, you get a speed boost for shooting him or whenever you collect intel is another rare item that appears from the supply boxes. Once it's picked up, it'll automatically grant the armor uh, the operator with temporary movement speed buff, sliding while having this boost grants a quick way around the map, and it allows tons of movement potential techniques, such as parkour, lines of jump, which can help before or during engagements. But this is not something you can activate on purpose. It's something that once you picked up, it'll automatically grant the operator the movement buff. So this would be hard to actually have a position where it's like, okay, let me get this item randomly out of a box and then activate it on purpose to make a jump to a position or to push a team. If they're, if it's just randomly popping up and you get it, right? Like the redeploy extraction token, the speed boost will not be a common item in supply boxes. And once picked up, it's, yeah, and it says supply boxes here. And once picked up, its effectiveness will be for an extremely limited time. Make the most of this boost, and it will generously reward you and the squad. Yeah, that seems pretty minor to me. 
just because you'd actually have to find it in a... Like, are you really looting in the middle of a gunfight? It would be really insane if you could just pop this at, at use or on purpose. Like, you would a dead silence or another field upgrade, which they do mention. Radar Jammer is a new field upgrade here. Early game potential? Very true. Let's say you land peak. You open up a box. You get a speed boost. You could easily just go push a team, get some crazy slides on them, whatever. That is a very good point. That is a very good point. Uh, radar Jammer, though, similar to how the tools work in Call of Duty Multiplayer, Radar Jammer is a field upgrade that scrambles the attack map to enemy maps and prevents kill streaks for anyone within a short radius. Does this also mean teammates? The field upgrade cannot be equipped for modes such as Plunder, but can be found across the map in supply boxes and other ground, ra uh, ground loot. As an area denial tool, the Jammer can grant mid to late game items like the PDS, which can change how a squad approaches their final battles. Yeah, here it is. High value, high stakes. The new high value loot in Warzone. First introduced during Operation Monarch. Really, 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 really like this change for Operation Monarch. It gives you so much more comeback potential in the mid game, especially because for the sake of a Monarch mode against Godzilla, you have re resurgence, so you can keep on coming back in general. Uh, now appears in the standard Battle Royale games as high risk, high reward places to loot. So there's more loot there, and the boxes refill, like they do on Rebirth, how those boxes re-pop up. It's basically that. Check your tap map, tech map or mini-map to see where these areas are and decide whether, of course, you want to go risk it. We know peak will be uh peak will be peak, and everyone new, everyone, every new uh point of interest will draw attention. But with this system, there are more options for a squad to build or load out by scavenging for items just like any high traffic point of interest, while the whole squad should be there. Uh, anyways, I really like this. But if you're coming back in a mid game, you can decide to go to these high loot locations and you have the chance to get more loot again. Fantastic. Like this is one of the reasons that I'm, I'm really happy that they added to Caldera, the restock feature where you could just get all of the boxes, all of the boxes across the entire map to refill. Fantastic. I love that about the, uh, rebirth mode. Very happy they implemented happy into Caldera. Would have loved that for Verdansk. Well. Something that I try and keep in mind with any of these updates is... Because I know a lot of people just hate Caldera overall. Would this be... Look at this. Even to it, this comment we just got. Bring Verdansk back. Caldera. Boo, boo. Right? Exactly. Exactly the point here. I try and think about these as if... If they added this to Verdansk back in the day... Would this have been a positive change? Would people have actually liked this? And how would, have, how would it have played? Because I think they've done a lot of good things to this new map that people would have loved if it was back on Verdansk. For example, the redeploy balloons. So much better than the underground subway system, in my opinion. So much better. I feel like th this could be another one. Obviously, we don't know. We'd have to speculate on all of those things. Objection spec uh, causes for speculation. We'll go ahead and move on to the next thing then. This year could arguably be, uh, be a strong one for Warzone solo players. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Are they, about to, are they about to say what they're about to say? What I think they're about to say? With Rebirth, Research, and Solos being a fast-paced variant of the traditional Battle Royale, Free-for-All, and Caldera Clash being an awesome place to level up weapons. With Classified Arms Reloaded, solo players will get another high-intensity, limited-time mode, and, the name suggests, fight to become the champion of Caldera. Holy f dude. Launching on the first day of Classified Arms Reloaded, Champions of Caldera features 150 maximum players in a single con continuously closing circle in the Battle Royale fighting style of survival. Wait, this isn't what I thought it would be. Continuously closing circle. They've done this on PUBG before. I've played a lot of this. All operators will drop in with their custom loadout, a gas mask. Wait, you start with a loadout? A gas mask Happy and a birthday. single redeploy extraction token. A single redeploy token. I actually really like that they're at least having one token for it. The item pool is slightly altered to emphasize equipment not normally found in loadouts and epic to legendary rep rarity weapons. Collect cash to visit and upgrade buy stations, which feature the advanced UAV, explosive bows, and even specialists for a hefty fee. What is this, man? Most notably, kills in the game mode immediately refill player health, equipment, and ammo, incentivizing uh, would-be champions to play aggressively and eliminate the competition directly to have a better chance of victory. So it's even incentivizing kills? Immediately refilling player health, equipment, and ammo? This actually sounds insane, bro. 
It's basically going to be a solo mode where you've got one respawn. I don't. It doesn't mention there also being a gulag, which I do think would be nice if you had a, a free respawn, but then could also have a, a a gulags after that. And then the buy stations have advanced UAVs just in them. You could buy specialist bonus from the buy station. And you get refilled health on kill. I'm assuming like the intel mode, when you kill somebody, you could pick up the intel and it refill you, but they don't even mention picking anything up. It just says you get healed. This is going to be an insane mode. This sounds so good, man. I feel like people don't like the map because the modes uh, should be a lot better. The mode sounds pretty fun and sweaty. It's, I think it's definitely going to be funny. It's pretty damn sweaty. Sounds very chaotic. I love it. I also play solos. This sounds amazing. It's going to be for sure sweaty because people are going to have the ability to push and they're going to have a res available to them for free. These, this takes out the things that disincentivize people pushing, but because you're only limited to one extra life, although maybe, you know, maybe in this mode, they turn up the feature where you can get a, another respawn token, continuously closing gas. So the interesting thing about continuously closing is you never have a phase where it stops. From my experience of other games, for example, in PUBG playing continuously closing zones, you need to play the zone even harder because as soon as you get to the edge, and especially in a game like Warzone, where the gas is even more punishing than a game like PUBG, it's going to be even more critical to play the zone, which is also going to force people that are potential camp uh, edge campers in a much worse position because what do I always talk about with that? You get into forced plays when you're playing the edge of zone, and if you're holding people on the edge of zone, man, you have a massive advantage on that. So it's going to be a hard juggle of staying ahead of the zone. It's going to sound, it's going to be very interesting. Nah, they're still going to camp, load it to the middle and sit there. Definitely. Very true still. You cannot avoid the center zone camping. That's why if you play central zone, you can run into way more RNG of just getting shot in the back because you, you never know when people are going to decide to cross buildings. But my point is, if you want to push high kills, you watch the end of zone, at the edge of zones, or you can push UAVs through and catch the people camping in middle zones. Or you try and take control of the central positioning uh, building, which is going to have the most high traffic around it, which gives you the best line of sights on all the other things. Typically, those are higher traffic anyways. If you can contest those, you get central zone. You can play out toward the end. Um, but yeah, this is going to be very, very, very interesting. I think this is super cool, man. I'm very excited for this. I am very excited for this, man. I think Caldera needs... And this is what I've, I've been talking about this for so long. Like having a, a special mode designed for solos... And if a game can crack a really fun solo experience, because a lot of games are pretty close. Even Warzone is pretty close. You have 150 people jump in. The beginning's really fun. The ending is really fun. The mid game has potential. You can still do contracts even if the mid game is slow. Usually by the time zone two, zone three, especially rolls around, there's only 20 people left in my games when it started with 150. So 130 people are already dead and out of the game. The rest of the game is very slow and you know can be very boring. If they can speed up that mid game a little bit by having continuously closing zones you also have better ways to actually spend money to where you have more incentives to go around get cash higher loot off the floor to get big upgrades to get a specialist bonus it makes the mid game more fun so you go into the end game more loaded that's that's what you need man and so many games are missing this i think another alternative to this is what they did for example with resurgence where they just have it so you can constantly get resurged uh, uh, or not, I guess, um, resurgence, but buyback mode. If you have 4,000, you get bought back, and solos in particular is what I'm talking about. This is separate from, I think, the rebirth resurgence mode is phenomenal. But what they've done for Caldera so far, buybacks is probably the best version of this we've seen. And even that, compared to the solo experience that I've had playing on rebirth, so much more fun. Because then you don't need to waste all your cash constantly buying yourself back. You can come back with a little bit more juice on it, which maybe is too OP for this, but I'm very excited for this, man. I'm very excited. We're going to try this out. And I will definitely be doing some videos on it. Uh, Beanox represents the next phase of Rebirth Island as well. Continuing the narrative that our operators, you, those who helped build it up through Rebirth Island Reinforced, helped us craft since back in 2021. Occupation scan... Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. What are they saying? Occupation scan active. Redacted protocols to begin. So operation scan. Okay, so this is part of it. This is operation scan in-game event. In, in -game event. Unbeknownst to us, upgrading the island to include radar towers gave the powers that be the ability to scan for hostile forces. At some point during the standard Rebirth Resurgence matches, operators may be alerted of an op occupation scan. At this point, 
they will need to go prone or else their position will be revealed to every other player on the tack map? What? Although this effect lasts for only a short period of time, the end the ends early and ends early if the operator perishes, the occupation scan should keep everyone even more alert of an island from which they need to escape. So, wait, uh, this does not this doesn't sound great to me. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Basically, there's going to be an occupation scan that at some point during the standard resurgence matches will force everybody to stand still and go prone. Or I guess you could still crawl when you're prone, but go prone, otherwise you're revealed on the tack map to everybody. So it's like a, it's an automated UAV that you can avoid by going prone to stealth. That kind of sounds annoying more than uh, helpful, mostly because it's just something that's total RNG. It's basically going gonna, gonna to cater to the worst player. It's not the worst, but I do think uh, it, it's probably going to slow down the way that the game is played. It could end up being a net positive, though. It, it, because if people are running around and they don't know about it, they, they haven't read through the notes or it doesn't do a good job of explaining that to you, then it could be something that ends up being a better benefit because you get a, get a, you get a free UAV. And most people don't run Ghost, which I'm assuming Ghost would protect you from as well. But for Ghost, you have to be moving as well. So I don't know. We'll see when it goes out. Definitely, I'm down to try it. And I will say, I like the stuff that they've added to Rebirth in general. They have added so many cool things to change the way that this game is played. Big fan, man. I, I think that they should do more of that to Caldera. It's what they did a lot of to Verdansk as well, if you guys played a lot of that. All right, there you go. That That's pretty big update.